Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, we're going to explore how to create and deploy Python applications using the InnoSetup compiler. InnoSetup is a free open source software that's used to deploy Python applications across the internet. Now, what this means in very basic terms is that we're going to create in this tutorial a installer that allows us to install and execute our Python applications on anyone's PC, regardless of whether they have Python installed or not, or even if they have Python installed, but not the different libraries that we use. So we're gonna generate a platform independent uh, installer that anyone can use and install on their system. And the nice thing about InnoSetup is that it allows us to give make this very nice UI. That's what InnoSetup provides, a nice installer that lets the user choose where to install it, uh, and then other settings like that. It's uh, pretty cool. It, it really bundles down your application into a very small file size into a single file. So it's very convenient to download and uh, give to your clients or customers. So that's the benefits of using Inno Setup. It's very popular. It's been used for decades. So uh, rest assured, it's a very good option. Okay, so how do we do this? Now, Python is a bit of an oddball when it comes to deployment. It is not a compiled language like C or C++. So Python itself has, as a language, it has some limitations that are actually gonna make this video a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Because Python needs a Python interpreter to actually execute. Unlike C or C++, which generate EXEs uh, that can you know execute pretty much anywhere. So that is the issue with Python. Now, this, give, this leaves us with two solutions. Solution one, we can install Python on the user's PC by bundling that into InnoSetup. This is an option. However, this has some drawbacks. First of all, it's way more complicated. And second, it's basically platform specific. So, what you do for, for example, uh, Linux is going to be a bit different. What you do for Mac is going to be different. But what you do for Windows is, is going to be different. So this is going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, so, yeah, and it's just not very easy to set up. The second option is that we use a bundler, a bundler library like PyInstaller or CXFreeze or Nutica or Py2EXD. What these libraries do is uh, they take the Python files and all the libraries and all the dependencies involved, and they take the Python interpreter and bundle it into an exe, and basically kind of recreate that effect that C and C++ do. It's not as efficient, but it gets the job done. The only disadvantage with this approach is that it's a bit, uh, well, it requires some setup, that's one, and two, that it's a little bit slower than running the Python files directly using a, a Python inter interpreter directly. So that is a drawback, but again, it's much simpler and it's a very good base to start out from, especially if you're not exactly making some kind of super fancy commercial application. This, is, this will suffice. Okay, so we're gonna go with option two in this video. I just wanted to make it clear what our options were so, so that you don't wonder why we're doing all this. Okay, so we're gonna use PyInstaller. Now, I'm not gonna go into the details of how we use PyInstaller. Um, PyInstaller is just easy to use, so that's why I'm using it. But uh, you can feel free to, you know, use any other library. I've made video videos on pretty much all of these different bundler libraries, so I will include them in the description below along with any um, common common errors and how to fix them videos, okay? Just in case you guys run into some problems. So let's begin, that's enough talk. So I'm gonna go over here to my sample app. Let me just run it once so that you guys can see. It's a simple take inter application, a GUI application, and it just, it's just a sample app that I made once to showcase some uh, a dark mode. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna go here, CD sample app, and over here I'm gonna run the pyinstaller command. Again, you can use whichever you want to. 
Personally, I recommend Nutica. It's just a bit more complex to set up, but its performance is much better. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do main.py. Then I'm going to add some flags, like add data. Uh, then I need to put the path to this file. And before that, actually, I'm just going to put in the disable console because I don't want that console window popping up. All right, because this is a GUI application. So I'm just going to paste the path in here. Then I need to put a semicolon and then a dot. The dot represents where I want it to end up, uh, the destination. Like this is the source and then the semicolon is the separator and the dot is the destination, dot being the root folder in the output file. So I'm going to hit enter and this will execute. I haven't used PyInstaller in a while, but I'm going to have to pause the video just for a second and recheck exactly what this was called. All right, so apparently it's called no console. I must be mixing it up with some other bundler library. Okay, so now it's going to execute and this is going to be pretty quick. All right. All right, so that's done. It's just going to generate it in here. So ignore the build that's just used during the building process. We'll go to dist for distribution. And in here, you can see all these different files. All right. And yeah, that's what we want. So I'm just going to run this to show you that everything's working. Okay, cool. So now our application is set up in a way that it can be installed on any device that does not have Python. Because in, in a nutshell, what these libraries do is that they bundle the Python interpreter along with the, you know, this is the, along with all these dependencies. And let me actually show you. See, you see, this is the Python file, okay? The Python 3.10, that's the one I have installed. So that's the file for it. And that's how it maintains this platform independency. Okay, so I am going to go here, all right? And I'm gonna go on stable release. And here we are, just download this, Okay, click on this link and it's going to download. Then I already have this installed. So I'm just going to open this up right here. That's where I was practicing earlier. I'm just going to create a new empty file. We'll do, you, we'll do it using the script wizard because that's a bit easier for first time users. Okay. And let's just keep this on the default. Okay. So we'll call it something like tutorial application version 1.1. Let's just keep all this at the default. Let the user change it. Okay. Um, okay, let me just go through this a bit more. Um, this is where it's going to end up. Okay, the program files folder. Where it's going to end up when we install it. Feel free to make your own custom destination if you want to. This, this, this is the name of the output folder. And allow the user to change um, where it's going to end up, I guess. This is the location of the file. So right now it's set to some default thing. Let me go over to our dist folder and then click on main.exe. Main All right, now what we're gonna do here is add all of these different files, except main.exe. Okay, there. Now, this, these all are going to be included in the root directory when we generate this, you know, when we install the installer, okay, it's going to generate an installer, we run the installer, then it's going to take all these files and put them where they're supposed to be. Now, you can change where these files end up by clicking edit and then you can change the destination subfolder. Right now they're set to base, which is where we want them. But just in case you don't want them there, you can change it to something else. Like if you have images and you want all the images to be in the images folder, so this is what you can do. Okay? But we don't we're not going we're not going to do that right now cuz we don't have any images except one. So there's no point in making a separate folder for that. So I'm just going to go next and next and yeah, let him create a shortcut. 
allow user to create a desktop shortcut, uh, license stuff. This is where you would put license files. If I was at, if I was actually making an application, a real life application, I would put like uh, open source or um, some other MIT license, maybe stuff like that. Or if you have a commercial license, then you would want to put that here, definitely. Then I'll just leave that at the default, um, you know, unless you are picky about that for some reason, then again, language up to you. That, that's kind of like the convenience of Inno setup. It gives you all these cool things. And I don't think I need to do anything here. Compiler settings. Leave that at the default. And also leave this at the default. All right, Inno setup will handle all that. And we can compile the new script now, which is going to run it. See, this is the script that you see behind over here. This is what is actually being generated. Uh, and then the setup wizard was just an easier way of doing all this. I'm going to show you how to actually read the script in a minute. Let's go ahead and compile this. Okay, we're going to save the script as well so we can run this script later. Okay, I'm just going to come here and save it as script. I'm going to open the script up later and show you uh, some useful things in here. Okay, so now it's executing. I'm not sure where it's going to end up exactly. Um, let's see, probably somewhere in here. Ah, right, in the same folder. Okay, cool. So here is our exe. It's 7.6. I'm just wondering how much of a decrease was that? So from 21 MB, it went down to 7.6. That's pretty good. So now if I run this, okay, I'm just going to run this installer now. No worries, because it's our own software. We know it's cool. So I'm going to install this now and launch. We can go ahead and launch it. And look at that. All right, let me just go ahead and take a look at exactly what's going on. So I'm just going to go over to my files over here. It looks like we might have made an awkward mistake. Program files. What did we call it? Tutorial. So. Oh boy. Now this is an awkward mistake indeed. All right. So I figured out the problem. Basically, these three files weren't, weren't included. TCL, TCL8, and TK. And it turns out, so if, if you add a folder using the add files option, it's not going to work. Okay, that's the moral that we learned today. You need to use the add folder option. Okay, and you need to specify the destination as, uh, you know, like if you include TCL as add folder, then write the destination down as TCL. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it's just going to take everything from within this folder and then paste it into the root directory. Okay, let me show you what it looks like over here. You see, uh, these are the three files. And you can see the asterisk, meaning everything within them is to be included. Uh, but we want everything within them to go into the TCL file. So app, which is the base directory, slash TCL, okay? And then TCL8, TCL8 over there. Okay, so this is how you do it. Now I've already recompiled this uh, and executed it. So it's actually gonna work. I tried it out. Um, let me just go back to C drive, program files, then tutorial. And I will now click on this and here we go. Okay, so that's all we had to do. I'm glad we got to discuss this issue though, because I feel like a lot of people are gonna end up gonna end up making that mistake. All right. Now, if you want to uninstall this application while debugging things, like I just had to, so you click on this exe right here. Okay. And other than that, I think we're done. You just need to share that installer that was generated over um, here in output, and you're good to go. So. This is the script, by the way. Let me just close this for a second and then click on it. You just click on the script 
and it's going to open up and then you can you know make any changes in here so this is the important part files that i was messing around with and then there are other things over here like uh, metadata and then setup i'm not too sure about this it, um it's a bit complicated stuff you'll have to look these up individually i guess in the documentation but once you've made your changes and you're ready to uh, compile you can click on run over here and then run or f9 okay so that's the end of this video hope you have found it useful if you guys want to see something else if you guys want to see uh, some other ways that we can use inno setup or something uh, other options or setting with within it let me know in the comment section below and then i'll take a look at it and make a video if there's enough demand all right so see you guys in the next video